Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we're here to go through June's Book of the Month selections and to see whether I picked or passed. Alright everyone, welcome to the second video in this new series I'm doing where I recap all of the selections made by Book of the Month for the month in question and we go through each one and I tell you whether I picked or passed. Now I will say that this was a little bit interesting because this was a very add-on heavy month. I think off the top of my head Book of the Month had eight add-ons and five curated monthly selections and a lot of their bigger releases were featured in the add-on selections and so I know a lot of people were really disappointed because they didn't want any of the main picks but they wanted the add-ons and unless you do a main pick in your box you're not able to access the add-ons. So so a lot of people I know skipped and are like putting those add-ons in their box for next month. And I was kind of in the same boat. I did end up making one main pick for a couple of reasons, but I might've ended up skipping the month altogether and just going with next month. But anyway, we're going to go through all of that right now. So of course, starting with the monthly curated selections, as I mentioned, Book of the Month had five this month. The very first one we're going to discuss is a book called Honey by Isabel Banta. This is one that was not on my radar at all. It is a June release, but I had never heard of it at all. So it was not part of that prediction video. This says it is rock and roll with this story about the rise of a pop star with the voice like honey that everybody wants a piece of. My understanding is I think this is kind of set in like the maybe the late 90s early 2000s and it follows a girl who becomes part of this really popular girl group and her rise to fame and all of the pitfalls that come with it. Like I said this wasn't on my radar at all and after reading about it I really wasn't all of that intrigued so this is not one that I added to my box for the month. Next we had another June release this time a romance that wasn't on my radar and it's called One Star Romance and this says fun high Jinks and chemistry abound when a struggling artist and stern academic butt heads over a one star book review. So I read the synopsis of this and it seems really cute. It follows two main characters who come into contact because their best friends marry each other. So that kind of reminded me a little bit of The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez and they don't really hit it off. They don't really get along and it becomes even worse when the guy writes a one star review of the girl's new book and so they're kind of struggling with all of this. But then the years pass and they reconnect and all of that stuff and I think it's going to be like a romance over the years. So you're definitely going to have a little bit of a hate to love aspect to this. You also will probably have a little bit of a slow burn because it's not going to happen right away. It definitely sounded cute and sweet and heartwarming and all of that good stuff. I'm just not really a fan of cutesy rom-com type stories. So I personally did not add this to my box, but I do think that a lot of people were really happy to see it there. This next one was truly an early release. It is not coming out until July. So this definitely would not have been on my radar to feature in my prediction video for the month of June. It is called The Lion Women of Tehran. And it says a rapidly transforming Iran plays backdrop to this drama about the evolution of a complex friendship between two girls. So my understanding of this one is it's set primarily in the 1950s and it follows two girls who become really good friends after one of them experiences some changing circumstances but when that one girl is able to go back to her life of privilege they drift apart. So it's kind of a tale of their complex friendship dynamics and then like I said this is all set against the backdrop of a rapidly transforming Iran. So there's a lot of conflict going on in the country. So it sounds like this is going to be very atmospheric. It's probably going to be very raw, very harrowing at some points. There's definitely going to be a lot of complex family dynamics. This definitely sounds intriguing to me. It wasn't one that quite piqued my interest so it wasn't one that I added to my box but I do love a good character driven story especially that deals with complicated relationship dynamics. So this is definitely one that I'm happy to see featured on Book of the Month. Next we actually had Peter Swanson's newest release called A Talent for Murder. Now I didn't mention this in my Book of the Month prediction video. I mentioned it in my new release video but not the prediction video because I don't necessarily remember the other two books in this series being featured. Now I could be completely wrong about that and I probably am because Peter Swanson is not necessarily on my radar. I don't really pay attention to his releases although I am curious to read more from him. He seems to get a lot of buzz. A lot of people really like him. So this is actually one that I added to my box not necessarily because I wanted this to be the book that I read by him but because I'm doing a very specific year-long project and this book fits what I'm doing for that project. Plus I did want some of the add-ons and so this allowed me to grab the add-ons. Like I said there are two books that come before this one in the series but my understanding is that they are completely companion novels, you do not need to read one before the other. They just kind of feature recurring characters. Again, I read the synopsis of this one and this follows a woman who gets married to a man after a relatively short amount of time and his job kind of takes him away on long business trips and she kind of becomes suspicious of him and when she visits these places that he's been traveling, she finds a string of murdered women and she kind of suspects that her husband is a serial killer. So she calls in a friend, one of those repeating characters from another story, and they're going to investigate this man. And I'm actually really intrigued by the synopsis now that I know what it is, so I'm excited to get into it as 
soon as possible. And like I said, this is the one main pick that I did add to my box. And the very last curated selection is actually the only one that I got right. And that was Rufy Thorpe's newest release called Margot's Got Money Troubles. It says, affairs, pro wrestlers, not safe for work internet content, oh my. Follow the rollicking journey of a young mother making ends meet. This is definitely not really anything that piqued my interest. It's not one that I added to my box. I have never read a Rufy Thorpe before. This just really doesn't seem like up my alley, my type of thing. But I know a lot of people were really, really excited about seeing this one because they enjoyed the other book that was featured. I believe it was called like The Knockout Queens. So I'm really glad for the people who were super excited to see this book. All right, now moving on into the add-ons. Like I said, this was a very, very heavy add-on month. And thankfully, I actually did much better with these ones in terms of prediction wise, because a lot of these were featured in my monthly predictions. Now, the first one, I believe I had already talked about in the prediction video. It was Ruth Ware's newest release called One Perfect Couple. So I'm not going to talk about this here just because we already knew about this one at the time that I filmed the video. But this is 100% one that I added to my box. I was very, very happy to see this one featured. So it was added to my box. Also added to my box was the newest release by Allie Hazelwood called Not In Love. I was not surprised to see this one featured at all. Pretty much all of Allie Hazelwood's contemporary stories have been featured. And that was definitely one that I talked about in that prediction video. It just says, a forbidden romance between rival food scientists takes center stage in Allie Hazelwood's latest hot and steamy dish. So I'm definitely going to give it a shot. I hope that I enjoy it. If I don't like it, I don't think I'm going to be continuing with her as an author just because she's too hit or miss for me. And that's not really something I have the patience for when it comes to like contemporary romance novels, but I'm definitely willing to give her the benefit of a doubt. I've loved two of the three books that I read by her and I'm really hoping that I love this one as well. Another prediction I was correct about was Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. This is the follow-up to Butcher and Blackbird. I'm not really going to say much about this one either just because it is a companion to Butcher and Blackbird, but it does say, bloody, sexy, and exhilarating, this dark romance between a singer and a contract killer will have your heart racing. I've heard really, really fantastic things about Butcher and Blackbird. I have not personally picked it up just because I think it might be too much on the smut side for me. You'll have to let me know. I really prefer plot over smut because there's only so many ways that you can write a sex scene and it just gets really old really fast to me. But again, I know that there were a lot of people who were very, very excited to see this one, but they were disappointed to see it as an add-on because they couldn't get it unless they selected a main pick, but it was there. We did, of course, also have the newest release by Ellen Hildebrand called Swan Song. I did mention this in my book of the month prediction video. This is the last book in this Nantucket series that she's been writing for the last several years. I had a feeling that this one would be featured just because book of the month has featured her last several releases. And since this was kind of like the end to an iconic series of hers, I really didn't think they wouldn't feature her. It says in her final Nantucket novel, Ellen Hildebrand follows a retiring police chief as he tries to solve a mysterious fire. If you are an Ellen Hildebrand fan, you'll definitely want to go ahead and pick this one up and add it to your box. Another one that I predicted, and I'm certainly not surprised to see it all, is the newest release by Catherine Center called The Rom-Commers. Calling all rom-com mega fans, get in formation. This swoony story is a beautiful ode to love, lovers, and love stories. I know this was another one that a lot of people were really excited for because they love Catherine Center. I personally have only read one Catherine Center and I was not impressed by it, so I'm not continuing with her as an author. But I feel like she has been consistently featured with every single release and I'm not anticipating that to stop anytime soon. So this is certainly there for you if you are a Catherine Center fan. This next one, oddly enough, is one that I did land on featuring in that book of the month prediction video and I didn't for some reason. I just completely took it off the list spur of the moment. But it is the newest release by Alyssa Friedland called Jackpot Summer. It's a contemporary fiction. There was just something about it that told me not to feature it and boy was I wrong on that one. But it was originally on my radar for that video anyway because Alyssa Friedland is a repeat author. So she has been featured on Book of the Month before. So I'm not necessarily surprised to see this here. It's just not one that I chose to feature. And it says, turns out sometimes winning the lottery isn't so lucky, especially if you're part of an acrimonious Jersey Shore clan. Seems like it's going to probably be heartwarming. So if that is of interest to you, go ahead and add it to your box. We also had the newest release by Lisa Wingate called Shelterwood. Now this is another one that I didn't put in my prediction video simply because I don't remember her last release being featured. This is another one that I'm probably incorrect about, but I try to research this the best as I can when I'm doing my book of the month prediction videos and I didn't see it. So her book Before We Were Yours was featured on book of the month. And then she had another one. I can't remember the title of it offhand, but I don't think was featured. And so when her newest release came out, I didn't think it would be featured either, but it was. And the only reason why I didn't really add this one to my box is because I think I might be getting a copy of it directly from the publisher. I'm not entirely sure. If I do, I definitely plan on reading it. This says an epic excavation of the forgotten history of women pioneers who shielded children from land bearing greed and violence. So this is definitely one that I'm not opposed to reading. Like I said, the publisher reached out to me on Goodreads. I offered to read the book and review it if they wanted to send it to me. And so they said that they would, but like I said, I don't know if that's going anywhere, but if I do get it, I will absolutely read and review it. This is just not one that I featured in my book of the month predictions. And it's not one that I added to my box. And this last add-on that I'm going to talk about 
was a May release, so it wasn't one that I featured in my prediction video. It's called Joe Nothin's Guide to Life by Helen Fisher. It says, a thoroughly uplifting novel about a neurodivergent young man who unexpectedly builds a community and saves a friend in need by following, in a way he only can, his mother's words of wisdom. So this just sounds like it's going to be another cute, sweet, heartwarming, touching contemporary fiction. I know absolutely nothing about this story. It's not one that I had ever heard of before seeing it on Book of the Month, but it is there for you to add to your box if you are interested. All right, everybody, that is it. Those were all the monthly curated selections for the month of June, as well as all of the add-on selections. As always, please comment down below and let me know if you picked or passed, and if you did pick what you ended up putting in your box, I would love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of rock star emoji, like maybe a guitar, maybe a microphone in honor of Leather and Lark, as well as Honey. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.